All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Sharon Hughes, who is up in LA. How are you doing, Sharon? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And Sharon uh, runs Launch Your Creativity. And today we are going to talk about leadership blind spots. So, Sharon, mm. uh, what do you mean by leadership blind spots? Oh, boy, this is a this is a loaded topic. Mm -hmm. First of all, I believe that leadership is a calling. Not just anybody needs to be put into leadership. Mm -hmm. Many people are promoted into leadership because right. they're good at something. So, for example, maybe you have the highest sales for your team. So they go, oh, let's make you a sales manager or a leader. Let's make you VP of sales. But they don't have those skills. They're, they're good at producing sales, but they don't have the core skills to actually lead. So I believe it's a calling, but also the bigger question is, is are you leadership worthy? So yeah. what sets you apart as a leader that makes people want to follow you? Because if you're leading, that means people are following you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, it did just let's go back a second there, because it's an interesting point you just make is, is leadership being a calling and not everybody is, you know, has the wherewithal or whatever to be a leader. But yes. Mm -hmm. But yet the way, I don't know, the way business has evolved is that if you call in somebody in most organizations and you say, mm -hmm. oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in two or three years? They all want to be leaders, right? I mean, they may mm -hmm. say, I want to manage a department or I want to lead a group. And it's almost like we have set it up that leadership is the ultimate goal for everybody, but everybody can't mm -hmm. be a leader, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that when people say, oh, ultimately, I want to be a leader. See, I, I'm a little bit of like a subconscious brain nerd mm -hmm. is that a lot of people want to be a leader because they want to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that because everybody that's walking the globe right now wants to be seen, heard. They want to be valid. They want to have something to contribute. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if you get stuck into a leadership role and you're not wired for that, you're going to fail and you're going to fail the people that are trying to follow you. So if you are a leader and you're struggling, so for example, let's say you're really struggling to make that connection with your team mm -hmm. and to help your team grow and get to the next level. There's that disconnect. So you have to step back and as you, as a leader, it's your responsibility to figure that out. It's not mm -hmm. your team's responsibility to figure out why this isn't working, like what the disconnect is, because you're the leader, right? Right. So, so if you are not wired to be able to lead people and um, come alongside them and teach them what they need so that they can get to the next level, then then that's part of that that failure. And companies constantly promote people into leadership because they're good at tasks, not because they're good with people. Mm -hmm. So as so. As somebody who may be listening, who may have aspirations of leadership. Um, I believe self-awareness is a huge thing, right? So we, mm -hmm. all, we all need more self-awareness. So how does somebody uh, assess themselves and figure out, am I actually cut out for leadership? Do I have the inherent skills or drive within me to actually be a leader? Oh, that's such a good question. Okay, well, first of all, I think every leader needs to have um, like a somebody that's either a mentor or somebody that they trust that that will be their sounding board so mm -hmm. they can get real with them and say this is where I am in my leadership journey what am I missing because quite often we we see everybody else right but we don't see ourselves and there's a very interesting um concept that you can use to look at this really quick so let's say that John, you and I are on a team and we're, mm -hmm. we're colleagues and I come to you and I say, what are my blind spots? You could look at the Johari window, which is super, super famous. It's like a, a window that has four panes and like one window is like what I know about myself that nobody else knows. Another pane in the window is what I know and everybody does know. Then there's my window of what other people know about me that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then the last pane, what I don't know and what you don't know about me. Mm -hmm. So if you can use the Johari window as an example, when you're having that conversation and somebody can say, look, you're really strong here, but you need to work on the soft skills here. Mm -hmm. That will help you. And you can say, okay, you know, break that down. What do you mean by soft skills? Because if you do not have soft skills, 
You cannot give the learning transfer of the technical and harder skills, no matter how good you are in that technical process, because people are just not going to hear you. Oh, absolutely. And so I think we have to do a better job then of making sure that people understand that being a contributor, being a key member of a team, being a specialist and an expert, those are as valid as being a leader. Right. Those are still things that you can mm-hmm. aspire to. And it's not just leadership. That's not right. the that's not just the only pinnacle. Right. Right. Well, and what's so interesting is that leadership, it's not just that you are leading a company. Mm-hmm. If you are a parent, a teacher, you're coaching T-ball, all of those, you're volunteering at church. Those are all leadership because you're you're coming alongside of people And you're contributing something. Mm -hmm. So when I speak and I hear like a stay at home mom say, well, I'm not a leader. Oh, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. And you are a leader in your household. So everybody has a leadership role. It's just finding that that passion, that niche of where your strengths and skills really fall and where they can be best utilized. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think with the stay at home mom, you're creating the citizens of tomorrow. That's, Mm -hmm. I don't think there's, given where we are in our discourse and our society today, I don't think there's anything more important than creating well-balanced citizens for the future. So big thumbs up to stay at home moms. Okay, so... As somebody starts to uh, move into a leadership position, what are some of the initial mistakes that they can avoid? Oh, gosh. Okay, I actually have a a little bit of a list. I call it levels of blindness. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Mr. Magoo cartoon? Oh, I love Mr. Magoo. Okay, so this is, (laughs) right, for for those those young people, so for our millennials Mm -hmm. that have never seen Mr. Magoo cartoons, he was this blind guy, and he just drove around, and he was always getting into trouble, but somehow he would get himself out of trouble. So the, the check question it out, is, check it out on YouTube because oh, seriously, right. it's, it's still so like good. one of the funniest ever. It's, it's hilarious. So the question is, how Magoo are you? <laughs> how blind are you to your own behaviors and patterns mm-hmm. that are keeping you from being that effective leader? Because we all have our blind spots, right? If here's a really good example, you could be killing it, killing it. But if your team doesn't think you're killing it, nobody else matters. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter you. And when you get into the boardroom with all the other executives that are like, Oh no, you're doing a great job. But your team is like, we so do not resonate with you at Mm -hmm. all. That's a leadership blind spot. So leaders tend to, this is so bad. I've seen this so many times. They tend to hang out with people that think like them and will agree with them. Because let's face it, we don't want to be real and say, hey, um, I think you might be blowing it. Like, <laughs> like, like we need to have a talk. Like, let's go have lunch and let's talk about your communication strategy here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, there's a couple of interesting things there. Well, number one, I, I totally agree with you is we all suffer confirmation bias, right? We want to, we want to <laughs> uh, surround ourselves with people who are going to confirm that we're correct in all our biases. <laughs> uh but the other part is, here's a difficult one, I think, nowadays, because you touched on, uh, you know, millennials, and we have intergener- multi-generational uh, right. workforces today. And I think a lot of people are str- in leadership are struggling with the fact that perhaps some of the generations coming in expect a whole level of communication and interaction that is way beyond anything we had, you know, at the, at the start of our careers or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's finding that balance. Like when, what is too much? You know, that's such a, a great question. Um, I worked in training and development on the corporate level and my favorite group of people to work with were the millennials. Mm-hmm. And it's because they were highly engaging. They had so many questions. They wanted to know, okay, if I do this, what happens if, you know, this, this, and this, they wanted a pathway Leaders, that is a golden opportunity to mold these young people to be leaders of tomorrow. They're asking the questions. And that's what true mentorship is, which is a big piece of leadership, is they they want the answers. You get to mentor them. It's just golden. It's golden. Mm-hmm. They, they're highly communicative. 
And that's good because business of today, it's communicative. We can't just sit behind our screens and try to get things done anymore. <laughs> uh, so to be a leader then, as I said, you're dealing with different uh, different generations. You're dealing with mm -hmm. different types of people. You're dealing with people who receive information in different ways, who communicate in different ways. So mm -hmm. I guess that's another challenge is how can you adapt your communication style to meet all these different constituencies? Oh, OK. That's a really, really big task. You have to know your people. So you take off your leadership hat and you become a therapist. It's just that simple. You need to know your people so well that when Bill walks in, like you're able to read something in his body language, like you know something's going on and he's not on top of his game. Your people need to be your business. And when you start saying, hey, Bill, step, come in my office, let's grab a coffee, you start building trust with him. And these people are going to be, they're going to be so committed because you are taking that barrier down and you're being authentic, and you're truly showing that you're invested in that person. And that's what's going to cause people to pivot on your team and become mm -hmm. um, so committed to your brand, the brand of your company. And it's amazing what they will do when they believe that you have their back. Yeah. So how do you, so how do you, uh, again, uh, coming back to this balance, how do you make sure that you keep, you keep it in balance and you, you don't go too far to where you're spending all of your time, you know, having these meetings and having these chats and, and that you start to, you, your lead, it's almost like your leadership position starts to become a little fuzzy and you're more like their buddy at this stage. Well, you do have to have some healthy boundaries. You do. When people come into work, they're spending the better part of their day there. They're spending, you know, 40 hours plus a week. This is what we can do as leaders is that we can create a place that people are so excited to come to to work. You have to create that kind of haven. Well, I shouldn't say you have to, but if you want to be extremely successful and you want to have a team that overproduces when you create that mm -hmm. space where like they're they everybody has stuff going on at home. They've got conflict with their spouses. They might have a kid that's struggling in school. They might have an illness going on in the family. But when people are struggling with those kind of things outside of work, and then they come into work, and they've got a boss that's like beating them over the head, and doing some of the old ways that we saw a couple decades ago, they're, they're going to they're going to produce even less because they're so stressed and they can't focus. But if they know that somebody is a as a leader is just like, hey, I got you, if you need anything, I'm here for you. You know, you don't want to cross that boundary of pushing because if they're they're not comfortable, you know, then you are crossing their personal boundary. But to be that um, that servant leader and coming alongside them and and creating that space so that they can actually be themselves and flourish in the role that you've given them, I think that goes a really really long way in the way that people want to do business today. Mm -hmm. They want relationships. So what about some of the other blind spots that you mentioned? You have a you have a list. <laughs> <laughs> I have a list. Oh gosh. Well, we talked about how leaders will tend to hang out with people that mm -hmm. only agree with them and and that kind of thing, but you can also get so caught up in in that level of agreement that somebody can convince you that what you're doing is right and that your team is wrong and that you need to replace your team. So you don't want to be blindsided by some of those truths. Maybe there are problems on your team, but you need to step back and not just act on what another executive or the VP, you know, the, a different department might tell you, or even the president of the company. Mm -hmm. You really have to be so vested in your people that you know their strengths and their weaknesses. Who needs to say, who needs to go, who needs mentoring? So that's a piece of it, but also like, don't be, don't be blindsided to the fact that there are issues that if you just ask the questions, they would be resolved so quickly. Like leaders tend to get really, really black and white. Mm -hmm. People are not black and white. There's a whole lot of gray area. There's a whole lot of misconceptions that come about with how a person carries themselves and their body language, things like that, where they come from. Our workplaces are, are so diverse. Sometimes you could think a person is not contributing 
when actually they might come from a culture that's extremely reserved and that mm. you don't speak up unless you're asked specifically to contribute. So it's breaking down those barriers. You know, I, I think it just constantly keeps coming back to you being self-aware as a leader and really, really knowing your team. Um, another blind spot would be is like, are you really clear when you give your team instructions? Mm -hmm. Because what sounds really great in your head yeah. may not may get lost in translation. And so many leaders are like, but I, I made an SOP. <laughs> that was very clear. And they're like, yeah, we don't get it. But mm. nobody wants to speak up. Nobody wants to say, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm struggling here because they because they're afraid of how they'll look. So here's another interesting challenge that is becoming more prevalent and a challenge that we didn't have you know, five, ten years ago, and that is uh, the distributed workforce, right? So where you have people who are working remotely, working from home, so they're mm -hmm. not coming into an office, and you're now leading people who you may mm -hmm. never, you may never see, may not even be in the in not not only not in the same time zone as you, but not be in the same right. hemisphere as you. Right. So how do you ensure that you can still uh, influence and build strong teams when you don't have that opportunity to have them physically in one place. I would totally do a, like a zoom call and go, we're, we're having coffee today or we're having lunch today. Even though it's not the right time zones, mm -hmm. you can figure something out so that you can get a face to face just like we are. And mm -hmm. you can go, you know what? I just really want to connect with you. Like you're part of my team and you're in a different country. And we're not getting face to face. You're you're not able to come to say office lunches or you know sometimes there's office parties around the holidays. But I want you to know that I value you. So let's just get on a call and you know I'm gonna send you a, a Starbucks coupon through email and you can go redeem it. Grab your Starbucks, hop on a call with me. We're gonna have coffee and we're just gonna talk about you know how are things going from your viewpoint. What do you see? You're sitting in another country. Like, what are you seeing? Yeah. Isolation will kill your company. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because because uh, we run quite a, a distributed organization ourselves, and we've actually found that through communication tools, in some ways, you actually become more connected mm -hmm. uh, because the instantaneousness and you're know, bringing people from all the world. It can actually create a wonderful dynamic if you embrace it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So in the last couple of moments we have here, uh, Sharon, is there anything else you'd like to highlight and then tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do and how they can learn more about you? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It was just such a, an honor to have this conversation with you. I'm passionate about people developing and becoming their best. So I'm an identity coach also, and what that means is basically, what do you believe about yourself? Mm -hmm. And that goes into leadership, but it also goes into your personal life. So if somebody wanted to reach out to me, either to come and speak to their group, speak at an event, or they just wanted some one-on-one -on -one coaching, they can go to SharonHughes.net. And right now the site's down because it's being completely redone, but it'll be back up in just a couple days. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's great because I, I do think because we live in this world of you know, you're on LinkedIn, you're on the, mm, there's a yeah. lot about you out there. Your person, I'm a big believer in this, that your brand, your persona is very, mm. is very important. Uh, yes. And therefore working with somebody like you makes a lot of sense because not everybody knows how to, to maximize right. know, their attributes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.